It borders surely on the desperate and malign if, on the day when we learn that the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority said the pension minister, that is a fellow called Maynard, um, who's, uh, Paul Maynard, who's the Conservative MP for Blackpool North, um, was found to have claimed unfair expenses and should repay £1,367 after he used state-of-the-art um, devices for some sort of campaigning purposes. And it also found that he'd underreported use of his constituency office by his local Conservative Party association. He was cleared of some wrongdoing over his higher-than-average claim of £106,000 for printing and related costs, but it nevertheless <clears throat> suggests an inability to deal with the rules which this party is uh, has imposed and is overseeing. Uh, it expects other people to obey these rules, and indeed, um, it casts a finger of blame at other people, like, for example, Pac Pat McFadden, who's uh, Sir Keir Starmer's uh, right-hand man. He's also one of the few uh, ex-ministers to have served under Blair and Brown, who apparently, although he's complied with the absolute letter of the IPSA rules, has not, we learn from, for example, the Daily Telegraph, today complied with the spirit of those rules. Now, the reason is because he had a house in Wolverhampton for which he was claiming... Uh, so much um so much money I, I i can't remember whether uh how much money that was actually um uh, and then when the rules changed he uh, he moved into a flat next door to the house he he was claiming money in mortgage uh repayments against the house and when he moved into the flat he claimed money uh, at about £625 a month in rent expenses as his constituency home. And yet he also owned a home in London. So he had two homes and a flat. And this continued until 2017, by which point he had been claiming about £40,000 in living expenses. And uh, although, as I say, he was perfectly entitled to do so, and it was within the rules of IPSA. The uh, conservative media is saying it's not in the spirit. But then, what about Mr. Maynard? What about this person who is a minister? And surely the Pat McFadden story has come out to try and deflect from the story about a conservative but it's the Conservatives who are in power. And I think the fact that this story about McFadden has been pulled out today, and it's an old story, uh, or only demonstrates how desperate and how conniving are the people who are uh, genuinely bending the rules and genuinely getting away with pocketing the extra buck. And it's unfair, it's unreasonable, and it's not right that the party in charge, the government, should have so many expenses scandals, should have so much of a dark shadow cast over it because it can't keep the rules that it sets. And yes, I entirely agree um, that this man should be sacked by Rishi Sunak. Will he do it? Will he? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He'll, he, he'll set up some sort of investigation or he'll think about it, but he won't do anything. And that is, that is wrong, isn't it? I think I would feel less aggrieved had the Pat McFadden rubbish not appeared today in the Telegraph. I think I would feel less aggrieved. I'm not... I've not bought into the Pat McFadden stuff. I'm not trying to defend Pat McFadden particularly. I just don't think the evidence is very clear and very cogent. 
but the timing of the presentation is just snivelling and nasty, and it suggests a desperation. I was talking to somebody today who tells me that the Conservatives um, have been instructed in local uh, local associations to target Reform UK voters. If that's where the Conservative Central Command thinks its vote exists, then Conservative Central Demand, uh, Central Command, is mad. Conservative HQ is wrong. That's not the heart of the Conservative Party. The heart of the Conservative Party lies in fairness and in responsibility and in reaching out to those people who are uh, in need of help. The, 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 this idea that it's a grabbing nasty party that wants to attack migrants and wants to attack people who have somehow or other slipped up in their paperwork, that's not the Conservative Party. That's the party from hell. And it's not a party I recognize. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid I, I've said it once or twice. I, I used to be a member of the Conservative Party. I used to pay my subscription. And I'm not anymore. And why not? Because the party has moved away from anything that I consider acceptable. Uh, I remember on many an occasion standing in elections, local elections and stuff, um, and standing at the standing at the polling booth and doing all the chatting and stuff. And so many times I found myself uh, being sidled up to by the Labour candidate or one of their representatives who would always ask me, why are you not in our party? And I would say, well, you know, in so many cases, I'm to the left of your party. The, the party, it, it's, it's not about tribal loyalty. It's about um, where one feels one can make a difference. And I thought I could make a difference in the Conservative Party. And I remained for as long as I possibly could because I, I wanted to fight against the, the mood swing which I saw coming in with Theresa May. Not with Theresa May when she was Prime Minister. That was a point at which I decided to withdraw because I, because I, 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 I was invited to put my name forward as a candidate for um, Parliament. I was invited by... Uh, quite a senior member of parliament, um, and uh, uh, with, with with quite a lot of encouragement. And I went through quite a lot of the process. And I thought once, once once Mrs May was promoted to prime minister, I thought that is unacceptable. She was bad enough as home secretary. She is the author of the hostile environment and everything that I think is wrong. And... And I'm not going to turn around and exonerate the Labour Party because I thought a lot of the Home Secretary um, stuff in the Labour Party during the Blair Brown uh, tenure was wrong and it was, all, it was going in that direction. But it got progressively worse under the Conservatives. And I can see reasons why this might have happened. I can understand the problems that were faced. It's the solutions which I think were wrong. And they remain wrong. So I have no party. And so I carp from the sidelines. And, and of course, I'm also um, a Remainer. And although I accept the principle of Brexit, I think that the Brexit that we've got is the very worst possible Brexit that could have been achieved with no benefit at all. And nobody has yet been able to tell me what the Brexit benefit was. I'm, I'm only too happy to be instructed, only too happy to learn, only too happy to be somebody's student, whether that be Mr. Farage or Mr. Rees-Mogg, or Sir Rees-Mogg, who, who, who is going to instruct me. But none of them have. They've all witted on with their rhetoric, and none of them have actually answered the question that I've placed. None of them. Not a single one. And I didn't see very much choice between Andrea Leadsom 
and Theresa May when they both stood. I thought they were both um, on the wrong side of the party and on the wrong side of history, and I believe I've been proven right. Mrs May was a dreadful Prime Minister, and I think arguably slightly worse than, to, uh, than uh, Liz Truss. <laughs> that, that's an extraordinary statement, isn't it? Uh, what, has, what did Mrs May achieve? Nothing. What did Liz, Liz Truss achieve? Nothing. Who did the greater damage? And that's the question, really. Liz Truss did a lot of damage in a very short space of time. But I think when history is written, we will find that Theresa May did a lot more of the long-term damage, and a lot of that was done and set in motion while she was Home Secretary. You only have to look at the Windrush thing. Uh... And, yes, Pat McFadden, not an innocent by any means, not an innocent, but I don't think he's as um, culpable of doing anything uh, wrong, uh, than, um, and, I, and I think uh, the Paul Maynard, Paul Maynard should know better, and the people who edit the Telegraph should be excoriated for trying to provide a distraction um, <laughs> to play these, play these silly, silly um, team games. This isn't a team. This is the future of our country.